Joining me from his home state of Texas, Republican presidential candidate, Congressman Ron Paul. Thank you so much, Congressman, for being here. I, I want to talk a little bit wow. about your economic plan in, in which uh, you call for shuttering, basically closing up the departments of energy, education, housing and urban development, commerce and interior. Um, and you're proposing about a trillion dollars in budget cuts. Now I want to I want to uh, show something to our audience that gives you an idea of Americans who are receiving government benefits. 48.5% of Americans live in households where someone receives a federal benefit. 34% of Americans live in household that receives means-tested benefits, things like uh, Medicaid, uh, aid to dependent children, that kind of thing. Do you? in a Paul administration foresee that those numbers would come down? Because you're talking well, they, basically they, they about... They have to. Right? Right. I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, well yeah, they have, they have to come down because the numbers you quote are obviously unsustainable. And uh, if we don't do anything, none of that's going to work because it's all going to be eaten up with inflation. So it isn't the choice of looking toward my program or having the status quo of 48 percent of the people still getting checks it, because it won't last. We're not producing. We don't have jobs. We're in debt. We're on the verge of another downgrade of our credit. So we faced our consequences. So if we want to save some of these programs, which I make an attempt to do, save Social Security and medical care for the indigent and some of even the educational programs, we have to do something. And we got into this mess by spending and borrowing and printing money, so we can't get out of it that way. So we, we have to cut spending, and this is something nobody else wants to talk about. None of the other candidates uh, are talking about cutting next month, you know, next year's uh, budget. Everybody's talking in Washington, and the other candidates talk about cutting the baseline increases five and ten years out. And this is why there's no reassurance uh, going to the economy. Nobody, nobody believes it's going to do any good. So I, I believe, obviously, Obviously, very sincerely, that you can't get out of a debt problem by accumulating more debt. It just doesn't work. One of the things that you propose, and there's been some controversy about, uh, is to begin to phase out, as you explain it, federal student loans uh, to folks who want to go to college, federally backed student loans, right. that you want to phase out over time. It, a, at some right. point, then, you would have people who really don't qualify for private loans, who couldn't walk into a bank and say, my son needs to go uh, to college and I need a loan. They, just, they simply won't qualify. Are there just some people who won't be able to go to college that want to in a Paul administration? No, I don't, I don't think so. Anybody who's uh, ambitious enough will get to go to college. The problem is, is college costs too much. And with the good intentions of giving people houses at discount, you know, ends up with a housing bubble and the people who are supposed to be helped, they lose their house. Same way with education, the attempt to help people in education, all you do is you don't get better education, you end up uh, actually pushing the price of education up. So we've delivered uh, now uh, hundreds of thousands of students graduating with a trillion dollars worth of debt and no jobs. So it's a totally failed policy. Only a generation ago, we didn't have government uh, programs, and people worked their way through college, and I was able to get through um, medical school and college, but it wasn't so expensive. So it's the inflation, the problems the government, as soon as the government gets in t involved for good intentions, there's always unintended consequences, and almost inevitably it, it backfires. And besides, let's say it did sort of work, uh, and it does work for some people. Some people get an education at the expense of others. But why should people who are laborers who never get to go to college, why should they be taxed to send some of us through college? So it's not even a fair system when it works. But obviously it doesn't work, and that's why it's coming to an end. And now they have to talk about, well, what are we, we're going to have to bail out uh, everybody, bail out the housings and, and now bail out the student loans. But uh, that's not the answer. The answer is looking toward the cause, and the cause is spending, debt, printing money, inflation, too much government, loss of confidence in the free market, loss of confidence in liberty is, is what it is. And where the responsibility is, responsibility is on the individual and the family uh, to take care of their needs, not the federal bureaucracy. It just doesn't work. But would you admit that there are people who need federal help? 
be it in education or be it in uh, housing or uh, food stamps, I mean, that kind of thing. Yeah, there's, there's always some needs. The market isn't perfect, but instead of having, uh, uh, you know, a trillion dollars worth of, uh, of, of debt and a medical care system that's totally broke down, you would always have some needs. But uh, that, ha that was in, in existence before 1965, but there was nobody out in the streets without medical care, nobody out in the streets that were, uh, there were more people under the bridges now than there were back then. And also, there were loans, uh, people do loan, but even if they have difficulty, you know, sometimes it takes people six years to go through college, and sometimes it takes people four years. But, some, but back then, there were jobs available, but the whole thing was, the cost was so much lower. So, yes, it will not be perfect, but what we have now is a catastrophic mistake where people have a pseudo-education and no jobs and all debt. I mean, we've indentured them, you know, for a long, long time to come. Uh, so we have to challenge uh, the status quo on how we run our economy okay. and run this country. Let me, let me turn you to politics here. You've raised a bit of a stir uh, because you have refuse to flatly rule out a third party bid. Now I know the minute you say I'm running for, uh, I might do a third party bid, that kind of, uh, you know, dooms a Republican bid, but, but nonetheless, um, if there were a th third party bid, just let's just say um, as a hypothetical, uh, wouldn't you see a third party bid from the Republican side of the equation as something that would doom Republican chances? Well, I don't think it would do it. It would cause uh, cause a little bit of a problem. Uh, remember, a lot Ronald of Reagan problem. did quite well. And it, <laughs> yeah, but, but Ronald Reagan did well with Anderson in it, and he still won rather easily. No, George H.W. Uh, Bush didn't they do so well with Crow. Yeah, but but uh, that's oh, okay. That's true. That's an, another example. But but anyway. Uh, I have no intention of doing it. Nobody's particularly asked me to do it, and they know what I'm doing, and I have no plans whatsoever to do it. Uh, let me ask you about something that a man named Matt Robbins, who is executive director of the American Majority, which is a Tea Party faction, which has um, some sway. It's not a small group. It's a, a fairly uh, good-sized group, who said this of Michelle Bachman. Let's face it, she's a backbencher and has been a backbencher congressperson for years. This is not a serious presidential campaign. Do you agree with that? Well, I think she's very serious, and uh, I think she did quite well. We were essentially tied for the Ames Straw vote, uh, so no, to say she's not serious or for somebody to all of a sudden make a declaration on TV or make some challenges that's repeated on TV means that uh, a, a person's campaign is wiped out. No, I, don't, I don't think that's fair. And finally, George Will, a well-known conservative columnist, wrote this about Mitt Romney. Romney, supposedly the Republican most electable next November, is a recidivist reviser of his principles who is not only becoming less electable, he might damage GOP chances of capturing the Senate. Republicans may have found their Michael Dukakis. What's your reaction to that? Well, well, time will tell. There's obviously times when uh, Mitt has changed his position, you know, and he's had to answer to it. Uh, but he's pretty smooth in answering this. But, uh, no, I've seen ads and comments where he's changed his position on a lot of things. Does that make All you that unelectable? All that is, uh, yeah. No, I, I don't think so. Not in this age. It, may, it gives them right. a challenge. But, you know, they've right. challenged all the candidates. They haven't challenged me for flip-flopping, so I'm very <laughs> proud of that. All right. Thank you so much, Congressman Ron Paul, for joining us this Sunday. I appreciate it.